Traveling to Mexico in your RV can seem daunting, especially for the first time. So today I'm gonna to take the mystery out of crossing the border and give you some easy steps that you can follow so you can get on your way to that sandy beach in Mexico, under the sun, soaking up the rays, maybe a little cold beverage with some fruit around the side, an umbrella perhaps and a straw, or you could just keep it simple and do some cerveza. All right guys, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to Story Chasing. My name is Amber and I sold my house and quit my job so that I could chase my dreams and travel full time. And now I'm helping people just like you transition into nomadic life and beautiful places like tropical Mexico, so long as you know the requirements to crossing the border. So today I'm gonna to give you the seven must haves when traveling across the border to Mexico in your RV or your car if you're gonna vacation over there, especially if you're gonna be there for over seven days and you're traveling with pets. Now I tell you, when I first thought about traveling to Mexico, even in a caravan with my escapers group, it felt a little bit daunting to figure out all of the requirements to get across the border. One of my number one fears with traveling to Mexico was insurance and thinking about the requirements for having insurance in Mexico and making sure that my RV was covered and safe and that if I was in an accident and it was my fault and that the other person's vehicle was also covered. So tell me, what is your number one fear when thinking about traveling to Mexico? Go ahead and leave me a comment below. All right, so let's talk about the number one must have and my number one fear in going to Mexico and that is insurance. So we're talking about car insurance, RV insurance. I actually went with a company called Sanborn Insurance and I'll provide a link down below in the description box and the pinned comment so that you can find that. But I went with Sanborn Insurance and the reason why you want to get Mexican insurance is because Mexico does not recognize US insurance. So even if your RV or your car is covered in the United States, you'll need to get insurance in Mexico because if you get in an accident and you don't have insurance, you could potentially be taken to jail for it or cited and ticketed. So you wanna make sure that you have Mexico insurance. Now I'm with Progressive Insurance. I called Progressive. I knew I was covered in Mexico, but I didn't know to what extent. So I made sure that if I was in an accident that my vehicle would be covered and the other vehicle would be covered as well. And I wanted to find out like what would happen if I did get in an accident and what would I need to do? So what Progressive told me is that if I was in an accident and my vehicle was incapable of driving, that my insurance would cover a tow back to the United States so that it could get repaired. They would not cover any charges to repair it in Mexico. So because Mexico does not recognize United States insurance, you need to get Mexico insurance. And because I was completely covered in Mexico on Progressive, I decided to only get liability in Mexico. I also made sure that that Mexico insurance had roadside assistance. Even though I had roadside assistance on my Progressive insurance, I thought it might be a little bit easier to have roadside assistance in Mexico on Mexico insurance should I possibly need it. So I went ahead and got that as well. Now I was in Mexico for 10 full days and because I'm in a van and I'm potentially going to drive that van around for all of those 10 days or some of those 10 days, I decided to get insurance for all 10 days while I was there. Now, if you have a tow vehicle, so if you're in a trailer and you have a truck, you potentially don't need to have insurance on say your trailer for all days that you're going to be there. You can just get your trailer covered for the days that you're driving into Mexico and driving out of Mexico, but then only cover your truck for all of the days. So that way, cause you're gonna be driving your truck around Mexico. So you wanna make sure that that's completely covered on all days that you're there, but you, then you only have to cover your trailer for the days that you're actually driving with the trailer in and out of Mexico. Now I went ahead and covered my vehicle for 10 days, full liability. And just to give you some basis of cost, it was $75 for me. And that's gonna vary depending on what kind of coverage that you wanna get with Sanborn. So again, I'll provide a link below so that you can find that information. So number one, make sure you get insurance. They might check it at the border as well. So make sure you have that before you cross the border. The second thing that you need to have if you have pets is you need to make sure that they have their rabies vaccination and a health certificate. If you go online and look at what are the requirements to get into Mexico with pets, they're gonna cite those two things. Now I will tell you, I've been to Mexico twice with my pet, one walking into Mexico through Las Algodonas with my dog Lily, and they never asked me for that information even though I did keep it on me. And then when I traveled 
in my RV over there, they also did not ask me for that information, but I wouldn't go over there not having it just in case because you don't wanna to get to the border and then all of a sudden not be able to get your pet over the border that would put a huge damper in your vacation plans and nobody wants that so make sure you have the health certificate and the rabies vaccination with you the third thing that you need in order to cross the border into mexico is something called an fmm now you only need this if you're staying for over seven days so seven days or less you don't need an fmm now what is an fmm an fmm is basically short for a tourist visa so i was there for 10 days so i did need to fill it out and it's a really pretty easy form that you filled out. I actually went online to complete it. Now, I'll give you a little tip here. Make sure you use something like Google Chrome that has a translate button on it because the first part of filling out the form is in English, but when you get to the payment section, it wasn't in English at all and I had no idea what they were talking about. So I had to hit the Google Translate button. And even then, it did not completely translate everything, especially if it was a picture on the web page and the picture had a word that was in Spanish. It wouldn't translate a picture, it only translates text. So I did have to actually go into Google online and do Google Translate there as well, meaning I would take the word that was in the picture and go to Google Translate, type that word in, and then tell me what it said in English. So it's really not a big deal. Just make sure you have that Google Translate on, or if you know Spanish, you're a little bit ahead of where I was at with that. But it's very easy to fill out online. It's basically just going to ask you for what is your entry point into Mexico. We were entering from El Centro, California into Mexicali. So there was a little drop down for that and you just would choose Mexicali or wherever you're going to cross the border. You're going to put the date that you're crossing the border into Mexico. And then you're also going to put the date that you're going to depart Mexico and cross back over the border. Now, if that should change, if you want to extend your stay, that's completely fine. You don't need to change your FMM. The FMM is actually good for 180 days. So it's just kind of a starting point for you when you cross the border. They just wanna know kind of what's going on. And the other thing that you need to put down is where you're going to be. So if you have an RV park like we did, we had to actually put the address of the RV park that we were going to be staying at. So you're going to need to put some sort of address on there for where you're staying in Mexico. Now, you may be hopping around Mexico and that's completely fine. Just find a place that you're probably gonna stay at at some point in time and then put in that address. It asks you for some more information like your name and your passport number, so you'll wanna complete all of that. So the next thing you'll need to do is pay for the FMM. So once you get to the payment screen, you'll put in your credit card information and then you're going to see how much it's going to cost you. And keep in mind that is in pesos, it's not dollars, so don't freak out because it's like, 500 and something pesos. When I paid for it, my credit card statement actually said that it was about $30 once they did the conversion. So you're gonna get an email once they approve your FMM and you'll want to click on the link inside of the email to go to the FMM form and print out your FMM and make sure you go ahead and print two copies while you're in there. The other thing that you need to be aware of when filling out the FMM is that you need to make sure you fill it out within 30 days of arrival to Mexico. So, so if you're thinking that you wanna to go to Mexico in about six months and you're super proactive, you wanna go ahead and get your paperwork done now, wait to fill out the FMM. You cannot fill it out right now and have it approved six months ahead of time. You has to be within a 30 day window before you cross the border. So just make sure you keep that in mind. So the fourth thing that you're gonna need is a driver's license. Now this may seem like a stupid thing for me to tell you, but yes, you definitely need to have your driver's license. They might check it once you cross the border. You need a license to drive. So the good news is that you don't need an international driver's license to just cross over the border and drive into Mexico for your vacation. So just make sure you bring your US driver's license with you, or if you're Canadian, your Canadian driver's license. So the fifth thing that you're gonna need is a passport. So you can take a passport card, or you can also use your traditional Additional passport. Now, you cannot get into Mexico without that. They no longer use a driver's license. Maybe I'm dating myself by saying that, but you see you could just get into Mexico and Canada with your US driver's license. You cannot do that now. You actually have to have a passport or the passport card. So make sure you have that with you. They will absolutely check that at the border. The sixth thing that you're gonna need is to make sure you have your registration and or a title with you for your car to make sure that you own it and that it's actually registered. They may or may not look at that. In my case, I brought it with me. They did not look at it, but you always wanna make sure you have it just in case. You don't wanna get into Mexico or get to the border and they turn you around because you don't have the proper identification to prove that you actually own your vehicle that you're in. So make sure you bring that with you. So the seventh thing that you're going to need 
that's only six fingers. The seventh thing that you're going to need is a copy of all of the information that I just told you you needed. So you wanna make sure you have an additional backup copy just in case it gets lost or they happen to take it for some reason. Just have an additional backup so that you can have your passport number on there, your driver's license number, any of your pertinent information like your insurance and everything so you can have it handy in case it's lost or it's taken from you. So those are the seven things that you're going to need. Now let's talk about actually crossing the border. So before I actually got to the border, I put all of my documentation into a little binder like this. And then I kept this up in the front seat with me so I could access it easily if I needed to. I even put my passport in there where it was right here on the front. And I made sure that again, that was just accessible to me in the front so that I could grab it really quickly. When I actually got to the border, you have to park your vehicle and then go into the customs office so that you can show them your passport and show them your FMM card. They're gonna stamp the FMM document and they're going to obviously look up your passport to make sure that you're good to go into Mexico. One of the reasons why I made sure that everything was inside of here too is that I could just grab this pouch go into the customs office and show them all my documentation so that hopefully I can make the process as easy and painless as possible and hopefully get through the border very, very quickly. The other thing is that there's a border agent that will want to come into your RV and inspect it. One of the things that I did before I went to the Mexico border crossing the night before was that I made sure that my RV was inspection friendly. What I mean by that is if I open this cabinet up, is everything gonna fall out of it if they open it up and inspect inside? So I made sure, that happens in a van by the way, or an RV, like things jostle around when you're driving. So I made sure that everything was tight in there and was not gonna fall out if they went to open it and inspect it. Um, I made sure that that was done all throughout the RV. One of the things that you wanna make sure of is that you are not taking anything illegal or that is prohibited into Mexico. The two number one very large things that are a no-no to take into Mexico is one, firearms. Can't take those in guys. No firearms, no ammo. The second one is no drugs. So I'm talking about illegal drugs, seems like a no-brainer. There are also recreational drugs in the United States that are legal now, like marijuana. So you wanna make sure that you are not taking those over into Mexico, it is not legal there, and you will be arrested for that if it's found. They do have drug sniffing dogs around the border, so make sure you keep that in the United States. One thing that you can do for items that you can't take into Mexico is to find a friend who can keep them for you or just go get a storage locker and put all of that inside there. So you just wanna make sure that everything in your RV is inspection friendly and ready for them to board and look through. The cleaner you have it, the less things that will fall out. I feel like the easier it's gonna be on them and the easier it's going to be on you. So just make sure that that's all set and ready to go before you get to the border. Guys, I'm gonna make this so easy for you. I am providing a checklist on my blog that shows you exactly everything that you need to do to cross the border. So make sure you click that link below in the description box or in the pinned comment to get that checklist. And remember, create, do, live every day. Right over here, there's another video on traveling to Mexico. Click that playlist so you can find more videos on everything related to traveling to Mexico and how I spent my time in Mexico traveling around San Felipe. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.